All right, man. I've been waiting for a minute to uh, get you on here, man. So, Mr. Bang Bang himself, how you doing? Oh, man, I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself, Pastor? I'm doing really good, man. I, I, I got to be honest with you, man. I, I wasn't sure in meeting you a few days ago or a week ago if you were going to be the same person. I don't know, maybe you thought that about me, but, man, <laughs> um, I had a lot of fun being around you, man. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, and, um, you know, uh, it, it's funny because by accident, when when we first started talking at first, by accident, I found out my congregation listens to you. <laughs> they, you know, so it's kind of like a, a funny thing because obviously, you know, you don't have a Christian channel and whatnot. I'm like, oh, you're listening to them. They're like, oh, you too, Pastor? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I, I think it's funny, man, because at, at first, I don't even remember why you came up on my suggested videos. Oh, I think because I was already listening to Convict's Perspective, you know, um, somebody had told me that they mentioned me. So I was like, who mentioned me, you know, and um, and then I think it started suggesting your channel, man. But uh, your channel is doing really great now, right? Yeah, pretty good, man. Uh, I'm sitting at, I think, 26,000 subscribers and growing. And, uh, you know, I'm just pushing my message, man, which is unity for the Ras in my own unique way. So yeah. I'm going to keep going and the ball's going to keep on rolling. And, and that, I, I find that interesting because at first... I'm like, what's this guy about? Because, you know, the prison stories and all that. And But in actuality, man, uh, um, this is what I, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel kind of like all of the Rasa talk and everything, uh, until last week, I actually got to see you. See, it's one thing to say Rasa and Unity on video in, in your house. It's another thing to actually see and be around people from everywhere. And, and I thought that was a beautiful thing, seeing you actually live out what it is you say in your videos. Yeah, absolutely. That was, uh, that was the punctuation mark to everything that I've been saying for months now. That right there was a, co a culmination of, of, man, a lot of hard work and just being able to be around the, the Southerners, you know, the, the Rasa yeah. from the South, and really enjoy myself, really. I mean, I didn't one time swivel my head. I didn't, I wasn't nervous. It was all love and embracement both ways. And man, yeah. it was a great feeling. Yeah, oh, and another thing, Sid, that's one thing you say in Unity and Brasa on your videos, but how did it feel you getting the reciprocation back? It felt great because, you know, you're always going to be skeptical. You know, I've been, I've been through a lot of my life uh, with the other side, you know, and, and it's crazy calling them the other side, but there's always going to be that stigma. There's always going to be that um, guys from down South. So automatically instilled in me was some type of uh, uh, reserve. You know, I was reserved. How are they going to feel? I know how I feel. I know where I'm at in my life, yeah. but how are they going to feel? And to see that we were all on the same trip, all exactly on the same page, man, was a great thing. And like I said, that, that was probably the best time I've had in years and a long time with guys from down south because i felt the love it wasn't just friendship it was love it was like family it was like one big yeah. family i agree you know? i i agree i remember the first time i was really around um a lot of people from from la was when i went to terminal island and it was about i want to say 200 actives you know what i mean because it was in the feds man you get all kinds of everybody you know and um but it's crazy because it wasn't like the way I was, it was instilled in me. Uh, you know, it was instilled in me to, like, in, I grew up in Tracy, man, and we didn't have that issue a lot. There wasn't a lot of people from L.A. or down south moving into Tracy. Uh, so I grew up and, and basically being told, you got to hate them, you got to hate them. And that's what I told uh, Cholo Trucker, you know what I mean? And I'm like, and, and I didn't even see anyone from L.A. till I was an adult already. Yeah. You know, and, and that's a trip, man. And and going to Terminal Island and being around a lot of them, I started realizing the issues are the same, the 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 same things we grew up eating. I mean, it's the same. Exactly. Exactly the same. Nothing different. Nothing at all. It's an imaginary line, man. Yeah. And, and another thing that ties you and I together um is is unfortunately uh Boyo Loco, who uh yeah. had had passed away. Well, actually he was murdered. Um and uh, from what I heard in the alley in Merced, and um, we, I had, he, he at one time was, I considered one of my best friends, man. And, uh, and, and that's, a, it's another thing that made me, and I told you this before watching your channel, honestly, uh, you reminded me of him 
he he was <laughs> he was he liked joking, but he was serious when he had to be. Same as you, and uh, you almost gave me a glimpse of him. Now I've gotten to know you. You know, I mean you for for who you stand for. But at first, uh, if, in case people wonder, like, what was Boyle Loco like? Well, to watch you, bro, is watching yeah. Boyle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. We, I've known, uh, I knew Mike, you know, Mikey, I knew Mike, uh, since we're about three years old, we mm. grew up in the same little area in a, a little, a little part of Merced called Beachwood. And, um, I remember, man, I remember since being little and I remember as we gravitated and got older, uh, we still remained friends. We always had a, a certain friendship, a certain bond, but we went to two different crowds, you know, yeah. I remember with his long hair with his hat. He was always red, everything. And he was a couple years older than me, but, um, we still were good friends. So, I mean, I knew Michael for through his whole career. And I remember getting incarcerated and getting out and then finding out he would, had become a rapper. Yeah. He was part of Dark Room Familia and not believing it. Nah. So I gave him a call. I, go, I gave his cousin a call. She put us in contact. And sure enough, it was him. I said, so you're Pollo Loco now. And yeah, we so we growing up in that same area. Um, everyone that's from that little spot acts the same. We're all the same. Oh, really? Yeah, we're all the same, so we like to joke and clown and cap and do our thing, but at the same time, we're very serious people. It's it's just how it's how you catch us, you know. Yeah. Like I said, everything that I do on my videos, everywhere, everything that Mikey said on the songs, we are that. That's exactly how yeah. we are. We don't sugarcoat nothing. You already know. You met me. This is exactly how I am. Yeah, and, and it's it's funny because I think sometimes people people don't people don't get when you're joking and when you're not. You know, yeah. and like I've had a couple, not like maybe two people be like, man, don't you feel, how do you feel some type of way when he, when he copies your laugh? I'm like, he's joking. He's messing around. You know what I mean? It's like, I get it, man. I get it. I laugh too. You know what I mean? It's, it's joking. And at the same time, paying homage. Respect. Exactly. Exactly. So I, a lot of people don't see it. They think that I, you know, that I'm clowning on. No, absolutely not. I'm paying respect and homage because I mean, uh, you know, at that time, I mean, the music was everywhere, had a big impact on our lives. So it's just something that I took from the music, threw into my spills, and it, it has a whole bunch of different meanings to it. But at the end of the day, the meanings are positive. It's respect. Yeah. And, and it's funny. You know, I, I turned it into a funny thing. Exactly. But, you know, like one of them, like even me and um, me, ALG, um, a couple other friends, we are always quoting Blood In, Blood Out. And, and we'll crack up and we'll laugh. But if you ask us one of our favorite movies, we're going to say Blood In, Blood Out. Absolutely. It's, so, it's, you're going to clown on it, but at the same time, it's, it's, you wouldn't even be thinking about it if you didn't have some type of respect for it. Good point. That's a good point, man. You know, so um, I guess my main thing, you know, I wanted to bring you on this channel about is, is I know the format of your channel. I know what you're doing. I, I like what you're doing. It's funny. Um, obviously, Maybe I'm not going to agree with every single thing, but I mean, that's not what you're not there to make everybody happy. But, you know, I like what you're doing, you know, and but here on this channel, I, I kind of was hoping to for the audience and the people watching to get a glimpse of um, who is Gunner. You know, what I mean, who are you? Because here's the thing, man, all jokes aside, um, what happened, uh, you being 11 and all of that stuff that happened with your life. Uh, being um, being locked up during the the years that you are forming into a young man, that had to have an effect on you. That that's probably why you joke because a lot of that stuff I'm sure came with pain. Yeah, there there's a uh, a lot a lot that I went through that not a lot of people could identify with or could even phantom. You know, the, it's eleven year old kid going through what I went through, and I know people are going to say, "Whoa, whoa, you did that." And I did. There's there's repercussions for every action. Yeah. But that started a long road of, of pain, turmoil uh, for everyone involved, everyone around me, the whole tight circle. I mean, anyone that I came into contact with, I had a lot of anger management problems, resentment, yeah. uh, mad because, see, I, as a young kid being incarcerated like that, I got distance from my parents where everyone's, their parents are still telling them, hey, get home, do this, do that. I was on my own. From that point on, from that moment that I got incarcerated, I was on my own all the way till I was 18 years old. And uh, that's the worst time to be alone as a kid because that's exactly. when you're still forming yourself as a man. So my only male figures to look at were other gang men that were older than me to model myself after that and to achieve what they're achieving, which at the end was frivolous. And later on, I found out. 
And so I felt some type of way, man. I felt, I felt a, a, a lack of trust in people. I felt, you know, the only one I could trust were just these few homeboys that I had around me. I felt uh, my parents, uh, you know, were gone. So I didn't have, I was rebellious. I don't have to listen to anyone. If I'm not listening to them, then I'm not going to listen to any authority figures. And so I was just bad. I was yeah. just bad from the core, you know, rotten did, from the core. Did you have your mom and your dad in your life? Um, I did. My father was in and out of my life. Uh, he was incarcerated a lot and they're doing a lot of time, but I mean, his family was there. So I did have my dad's side of the family, which was brought me, you know, I knew who my father was and I would go to my family's house. Oh, that's right. Um, in Modesto, right? In Modesto. Yeah. That's right. And his family lived in Merced, Winton, the Bay area, everywhere. You know, my dad's yeah. family was all around. So I, I was very close with them. Uh, my mother was always there, um, and her side of the family, you know? So, I mean, family was not the thing. It wasn't the family aspect that that turned me the way i turned it was ultimately my decision decision making yeah. no you i know? hear you man i hear you what do you think could anything have been done around those the, you know 10 11 years old that you think would have made your life different have you ever thought of that the only thing that could have changed me is if we had got up and just moved which uh. wasn't feasible at that time because i you know looking out the window there was a lot of different people in this little neighborhood where I lived. There was people that were just skateboarders and there were people that were run uh, into sports. And then there were people that were into gang banging or whatever, you know, yeah. there was a lot, of, a lot of different things. And I leaned more towards the gang bangers. You know, they just, it just, I seen something in them that, that I seen in myself. I wanted to be that. And that's the route I went, but there's probably nothing that could have changed. I mean, I, I think about it all the time in retrospect, in hindsight, like, man, what could I have done? Could I have made that right instead of making that left? And, I mean, it was exactly what it was meant to be. I just yeah. – there's nothing we could have done, like I said, besides my mother actually getting up and moving. And, of course, that wasn't going to happen. Yeah, I, I, I often think, like, sometimes people have asked me, like, would you ever redo some part of your life? And when I really think about it, I'm like, that's that's kind of a weird thing, like that, that back to the future. Because yeah. it, it – I would not be the man that I am today if it weren't for the things I went through growing up, you know? Yeah. And, and I, I, and, and I think it's kind of a weird question because I'm like, man, if I would have took a different route, would I have had the, the, the children I have? Cause would I have the wife that I have or the life that I have? And I'm like, man, if I would have went a different route, I would have had a different life. Therefore that would mean erasing the people I love in my life now. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a hard it's a hard game. You know, people always say, I wish I can go back. And yeah, that's everyone said that at least once in their lives. I wish I can go back and change this. But yeah. then just like in the movie Back to the Future, one little thing could change the whole course of your life. Yeah. All of a sudden your hand starts erasing. Yeah. Hey, Biff, what are they? Right. Everything changes. So what you got to do is 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 love the person you are now. Yeah. Just change. You got to change yourself. You know, there's a time and place for everything. Change yourself. Be content with who you are. Love yourself now. And everything that happened in the past, the past is the past. It's always going to be there. Yeah. But you just got to erase the past slowly by what you do in the future. That's how I look at it. That's good, man. That's some good stuff. Um, what else do I want to talk about to you? There's um, there's a few things, man. My, like my mind is like a Rolodex right now. It's just flipping because, you know, I, I don't want to take too much of your time. At the same time, I want to have a good video for people to really get to know who you are, man. I mean, um. YouTube, mm -hmm. you said that you had no idea you would ever be doing this. Absolutely not. I, uh, five, six months ago, I was just like every other person that watches YouTube, laying on the couch, laying on my bed, uh, watching YouTube. Um, of course, my past, you know, you never forget your past. No matter what you try to do, you can never forget your past. So I'll always, any type of, anytime I see any type of Northern or Norteño or things like that, pop up it's like it's like the phone automatically draws me there you need to look <laughs> at this right and so uh first thing i seen was a uh, paradigm media news uh boxer mm -hmm. mendoza yeah and he was reading his book and when he's and so i got intrigued i got into it i went and bought his book i was reading it along listening to him say it and man that and, that voice him reading his book yeah that was like like a magnet right exactly and then to know that i was also part of that exact era yeah. A lot of these guys, he was, I was surprised my name didn't get mentioned in that book because a lot of these guys he talked about in that book, I know personally, knew personally, know personally, continue to have relationships with them to this day. It's just a trip. So, you know, when you, 
I had never been close to like uh, uh, any type of making movies or any, anything like that. So to hear, you know, guys that I know mentioned this book was like, oh, look, I felt like a celebrity. Like, yeah. like what their shine was going into me. So reading that, I started thinking, man, I could write a book, right? Mm -hmm. So I actually started to write one and, and got sidetracked from work. I work a lot and just put that on the back burner. Well, one day I started to, uh, of course, something else popped up, which was uh, stories written by a current prisoner. Yeah. Of course, so I said, all right, let me trip out on this channel and kind of got stuck listening to a few of the things until a, a voice popped up. It wasn't a picture, but it was just a voice. And I said, I know that. I know that voice. I know that voice, right? And I said, that's, that's Flaco, right? That's Flaco. And, 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 and I said, so I left, a, I left a message in there. Hey, this is who I am. Um, is this Flaco or whatever? You know, I wasn't sure because he never mentioned his name. I didn't catch where he mentioned his name. I just knew the voice. Yeah. Sure enough, he DM'd me back and was like, yeah, this is him. Then he said, then he asked me the next question. Would you ever mind doing an interview? And I thought about it for a couple of days. Let me, get, let me have a couple of days to think about it. And I said, absolutely, I'll do an interview. And we did one. And then I think two more. And the people just responded. They, you know, had massive amount of views on my story. And all I do is pretty much tell my spills that I tell now, but condensed into one story. Uh, I did a, several, a few of them. Yeah. And uh, the guy who uh, runs Story by a Current Prisoner, he got at me and he was like, oh man, that was powerful. And then of course, Flacco tapped in with me. And then he goes, hey, me and, uh, and then Rojo came on there, Convict's Perspective. They started they, they I, I was talking to them daily now. We're yeah. building a relationship. They said, hey, we're going to do a channel. What do you think about that? I said, man, I'm totally in support of your channel. I'll watch it. You know, I still wasn't thinking of making my own channel. Wow. And I seen how they started to do their channel. People started asking, you know what? Maybe they have the recipe here. Maybe there's something here. I'm going to put fillers out there and maybe start my channel. So I told them, what do you think about it? They said, try it. And it exploded. You know, and that was, it was history. People like it. They continue to like it. And I started grabbing, uh, you know, I wasn't my complete self in the beginning. You know, I was nervous. Yeah. Being more reserved, kind of testing the water, seeing what people would like. But as I started to get deeper, people started to watch. I started to open up more and show my true self, how I am. Yeah. And the personality that I am, some people hate it. Some people love it. Some people love to hate it. But more people could identify. More people were like, as funny as this guy is and what he says and all this crazy stuff, quoting movies and songs and all this, but he knows what he's talking about, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I don't even show my level of, of, of smarts, I guess you would say, or intelligence. You know, I'm still new, so I'm still getting into it. Yeah. I haven't even opened up fully, but I'll get there. But yeah, there's a lot more to me side and a whole lot more spills. I haven't stopped yet. I dropped one five minutes before this interview. And I, and I figured that, man, because it's like um, being incarcerated, you know what I mean? I mean, I did one long prison sentence. I did six years out of an eight-year sentence in federal prison. Federal prison, 85%. Um, but even even during that time, um, you, you either are going to just play dominoes the whole time or you're actually going to read and get educated. So when I meet somebody that's done a lot of time, I, I know I'm talking to an intel intelligent person. Jokes aside, all that aside, you know, um, especially um, the people you're around, it's it's almost um, they want you to be educated, you know. Absolutely. So, yeah. So even through the jokes, man, I can see right through it. And, and I know that you're an intelligent man, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, that's why, like, I wanted to sit and just talk with you and, and, and like what makes Gunner tick? You know what I mean? What, what motivates you? Um, I don't um, know. What motivates me is the past. The past and, and a lot of wrong I did. Just a lot of cutthroat, shisty, shady moves that I made. Moves that I knew were, were, were bad at the time, but didn't yeah. care. Uh, a lot of the propaganda and the poison, I say, that I, that I spit into these kids' ears, these youngsters' ears to go one way when I knew I was leading them astray. And things like that, I found a channel now, an avenue to kind of alleviate some of that off my mind, you know? Yeah. Maybe, maybe not necessarily, you know, these, these young kids, these, these people, they're going to believe me or don't believe me. You know, take it for what it's worth. Take it for a grain of salt. But, and, and you know, people always have that, that cliche, if I could just touch one person, then it's worth it. No, I don't want to touch one. I want all <laughs> to come. You know, yeah. and and the only and the only way I could see, you know, what it does is, like I said, it helps me. It's therapy for me because of so many bad, so much bad things I do. I feel good at the end of the spill because I know 
although the spill might be crazy, I might be talking about a story about gang banging and, and whatever. I always have a positive message at the end. There's yeah. always a positive message. So I feel like I'm making a difference. I feel yeah. like I'm, I'm, I'm part of the new healing process. You know, that's why I pushed the Rasa. I was one of the, I won't say the first, eh, I'll say one of the, the, the first biggest channels to start pushing unity and Rasa and really showing it, you know, going yeah. down there and showing it and uh, history in the making. So now people are starting to, a different type of level of people are starting to look and say, maybe this guy is really real about that. And, and I'll continue because, man, if, I if I'm able to somehow achieve and be a part of something like that, now that's real history. Now I feel like everything that I've done in the past, I kind of made up for that, you know? Mm -hmm. Where I was a, where I was poison, where I was a, a divider. Oh, I was a, a divider for reals, you know? You stay over there, we'll stay over here, and let's never interact, right? Now I'm totally uh, uh, on the other side of the, you know, the wheel and, and, Man, I, I I just like the feeling. This is a better feeling, you know. Yeah, you know. Um, I have a question. Then, um, when you started your channel, and obviously, if you were feeling like uh, you're older now, you know, what I mean, you have you have children. Um, did, uh, let's say the 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 light came on that there's it's more about unity. It's more. But I have a feeling that even doing your channel and you starting to see the response from people outside of Northern California and then the love and embracement, did that even start to, to make that grow within you even more, which is why I, I find it interesting that you say doing the video can be therapeutic. Yeah, it's like a fire was lit. It's mm -hmm. like a fire was lit and now it's like a big flame. Um, at first, I, I threw fillers out there. I always, I've, I've been feeling like this, you know, for several years. Yeah. Okay, let's see if, because I've never, deep down inside, when it was all said and done, it was always business and never personal. A yeah. little bit personal, but more business, meaning the, the gang aspect of it. This is what was instilled to us. This is what we're, was taught, you know. Um, but being incarcerated as a youngster, and like I said, a lot of people that know my story, I went to Spread C. Nellis. I went to L.A., Southeast yeah. L.A. I was incarcerated there for a few years. And so I grew up, you got to understand, 11, 12, 13 with Sureños, with Southerners, Southern yeah. Hispanics. And so their style, their flavor, their talk, the way they speak, the way they carry themselves, a lot of that I gravitated towards. Mm -hmm. Even though I knew I was from Northern California, this is all I've seen. You got to understand, I, like I said, I was influenced by people older than me. Yeah. And there was a lot of guys older than me. So I went towards their style. So automatically when I started speaking and the way I talk and the way I shoot my skills, a lot of people are like, whoa, whoa. He talks like us. You know, I'm speaking the guys from down south. Yeah. He carries himself like us. He dresses like us. He acts like, even though he wears the color red or whatever. And it's just something I wear. You know, it's, I, I'm used to it. Yeah. I'm from Northern California. It's what we all do. And, you know, something you can't never really take away. I mean, I wear every color, but it's just a predominant color I wear. But, anyways, they're like, none of that matters. They see me for, man, we can really identify with this guy. This guy should have been one of us, right? <laughs> and so no but the, the the level and because i never disrespect them i'm not a guy that gets down here and acts like they're less than you yeah. know it's every, i try to keep everyone on even keel everyone's equal and so they seen that and man i got more love from southern california than i've ever received from anyone in my life and yeah. it's total it's total embracement total love when they say they got love for me they show it yeah so, you know, you know, yeah when i used to um sell my music as dark room and sardino I got that a lot, you know, matter of fact, a lot of people don't know that I sold a lot of records in Southern California and in, in Bakersfield, Los Angeles, San Diego, because I talked like they did, you know, yeah. uh, I didn't, I didn't use a lot of the words like the Bay area slang that that's up here. Um, you never hear me say none of that stuff. You never hear me say the N word. You never hear me say I was going to talk and rap like a Chicano. And because of that, I think um, I was able to break down borders, and that's why we Darkroom did so well, not only in Northern California. We were not a local group. We were a national group, but I think because any vario you would go to from Florida to Texas to whatever, they understood that lingo. They liked that lingo, you know, and in L.A. too, same thing. Exactly, exactly. And that, and that you, Lowdown being from, you know, predominantly from Merced, the yeah. Lowdown group, and knowing these guys growing up around them, and that just that Chicano style, being locked up as a youngster, I it was a culmination of, of everything. I liked it. That was what I personally chose to go with. And to this day, you know, I still rock Ben Davis's. I still I, Chicano. I'm always pushing a rasa, rasa every yeah. day, every day. 
And yeah. this is just what I like. And so, you know, more of the guys down south could identify with it because they've always been into the lowrider culture, the cultura, the, you know, that style. So when they see someone from up north doing it, it's opening their eyes. Well, they're not all like that because they got yeah. a, a, a lot of them guys down there got a, they're, you know, they think, oh, all northerners use the N-word. All northerners use this. And even though I don't identify myself as an active northern gang member, yeah. no, I'm still a Chicano from up north, right? Yeah. So we're all thrown in the same pot regardless. Not talking politics or gangs or prison. I'm just saying as a person, we're always going to consider be considered a Chicano from up north, period. Yeah. A and so when they see, well, this, they're not too different, you know, that's the embracement. That's the love. I think that's what people seen and it just took off and it was all respect because I'm opening the eyes to, we're not all, you know, doing this. It's not all, it's, it's a, it's a, it's, you guys are thinking when everyone's the same, don't throw us all in the same pot. You know what I mean? There's yeah. tortillas, they might look the same, but they don't all taste the same. Right. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that's it. They just, I, I, I hear it on my Instagram, on my YouTube every single day, man. Hey, you should have been from down South. And I said, no, I'm from up North, but I'll go down South. Yeah. You know, there's no difference. It doesn't matter where you live. It just matters what type of person you are. Yeah. You know, you know one, of, one of my best friends right now, probably what my best friend, actually, he, he was a Southsider. I met him in uh, when I, my last two years, I made it to camp right here in Atwater. Uh, they, have, they have a federal uh, penitentiary and right next to it. They have a camp. I was able to get closer to home. So my last two years I did there. And uh, my my Christian brother, my brother, man, his name's Johnny Alcala. He's from down south. And he became a Christian in Victorville. So by the time he went to camp and I went to camp, man, we became the best of friends. And it's a trip because, man, I don't even see it like that anymore. You know what I mean? There's so many people. Um, I don't. I just don't see it. You know, even uh, Paul from LA Times. And, man, I, I don't see it, man. And And to me... That's something God had to do in my life, you know what I mean? Because I had so much hate instilled in me, hate that I didn't even know why I was even there, you know. But nevertheless, man, um, I, I love, I love what it is that that you're doing when it comes to that, and, and um, just props to you, you know, you. props to you because somebody had to break those walls, man. Because you say it in such a way that it it, it brings walls down. You know, that's why, that's why I'm talking to you. That's why, you know, because people are like, what is a pastor? Is he trying to go back to his old life? Is he trying to, you know, no, it has nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with, I like what you're doing and the way you're doing it, that I don't know. It's a certain way that you do it, man, that you bring walls down and it's, it's genius, whether you are doing it strategically or it just happens, you know, I just give you props for that. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, everything. And, and I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, a, a lot of it is strategy, but uh, uh, there is some that just happens. And I'm like, wow, I can't believe that happened, you know. Um, and when I say st uh, strategically, I'm not doing it to con anyone or no. any ill intention or ill. No, it's, it's done with the end game. End game being the equality for all, the social justice of equality for the gente or the mm -hmm. raza. You know, you got a lot of different movements out there right now. You know, you got the BLM, you got the whatever the case may be, this yeah. over there. But there's never since the 60s and 70s when, of course, we had Chicanismo and that was happening uh, with uh, Corky. Um, we haven't had nobody to really unite the people. Yeah. And uh, and and I, 15, 20 years ago, I would have I wouldn't even cared. It wouldn't even dawn. I wouldn't even that it wouldn't even been a thought. You know, my only thought would have been, hey, what are we going to go do tonight? But yeah. as I'm getting older, I need, I'm the type of person, I'm very hyper. I'm very energetic. I need something to put my all into, my time, my effort, my money, everything I have. I have to put it into one pot and see if, how that bubbles, right? And this is it. This is the calling. This is my calling. This is, I know this is it because people have told me I'm impacting so much people daily. You know, this is what I always want to be. Not that I wanted to be in the limelight or the shine or all that. Them qualities come, they grow. Um, just the fact that I could do something this positive for this many people daily, oh man, that's a blessing to me. Yeah. Blessing. Yeah, most so, definitely. So when um, obviously you you probably knew that I had given my life to the Lord, you probably knew all of that stuff probably before you did the channel. Um, and then upon now you knowing me now, 
I know for a fact, man, because I've seen a lot of people play church in prison. I've seen a lot of people hide behind the Bible in prison. I've seen yeah. a, lot of, a lot of that. I'm sure that that has um, filtered the way you see when somebody, like when you heard that I was a pastor. I'm just like, I'm just being honest because I, I want to know. I'm curious. What was your view at that time when you heard that I was doing that compared to today? Just honestly, I want complete honesty. Uh, complete honesty. When I first, all right, at the time that you first went Christian and then all that whole Black Widow mix and everything was going on, I still was functioning. I still was active. I still was yeah. in the mix. I was part of the Nuestra Raza. So I was privy to a lot of things that other people weren't privy to, okay, uh, being in, in, in that group. So first things first, when I hear about it, whoa, you know, that was a big deal because I listened to your music. I listened to the message that you push or the message that was pushed to you to push. Yeah. <clears throat> and I knew some of these individuals that actually repped with you, Boyo Loco, you know, he lived with me. Yeah. Um, just knowing what was going on, I kind of took a step back, like not mad, but like, whoa, let me see what's going on here. Now you got to understand with that, I've been incarcerated a lot and did a lot of years. So I had seen guys drop to their knees and just start crying for the Lord. I seen things like this happen with yeah. my own eyes. So I didn't think I knew it was feasible. I knew it was possible. Of course, I didn't know the time you were looking at. I didn't know what was going on, the ramifications, what was happening. So I was like, anything could be on the table here. He could be playing the system. He could actually be real with it. I wasn't too judgmental. I was more a guy, I'm going to roll with the punches. It is what it is. But then because of listening to your music and, and being like a, an idol to me, listening to your music, I was like, I'm going to have to do some proper investigation on this guy one time, right? <laughs> yeah. Not that it would have made a difference, but still. And I was able to talk to individuals that were way up there. We discussed it and be told, like, no, he's real. This is really what he's about. And he's good. And I said, what do you mean good, right? Because i always been under the assumption once you uh, turn yourself to the Lord or you stray away from the, 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 the propaganda or what's being pushed, then you were, you were a level of, of not embraced anymore. You were no good. But that yeah. wasn't the case. That wasn't the case. I was told by as high as you can get, um, he's actually better than a lot of these guys you roll with. This guy's good. He's real. He's doing his thing. And he's to be left alone and just do his thing. And I said, wow, well, I guess that's what it is. And not a lot of people were privy to that because yeah. we don't, we didn't go telling everyone, okay, you just do this, do that. This was for a select few of us that knew, and, and that's what it was. And I only got told just based on that I'm from Merced County, yeah. and Merced County went, you know, coincided with Stanislaus, San Joaquin. So we were all kind of the same boat. Yeah. Um, but, and so I remember at first thinking, yeah, being truthful, you know, whoa, what's going on here? Is it real? And then being told that it was, and this is the reason behind it, and hey, to leave it alone, and he's good, he's righteous, you know, and, and that was it. So I always, so I never kept, <laughs> I never kept listening to, stop me listening to the music. I never kept uh, uh, pushing when I was pushing. I never felt some type of way because I said, hey, life changes. People get older. They do different things in life. And I seen how it was for you. And I said, well, maybe it could be like that for me. Maybe not necessarily going into the Lord. I've always been a Catholic. You know, I'm going to be honest with you, but mm -hmm. never been a pra like practicing, you know, I always wear Jesus and, and I yeah. got the Virgin Mary tattoo on my head, but never went to, to church daily. Um, not all the time. But I was like, I've seen it happen. If, hey, if that's the route he's going, if that's what's going to benefit his life, that's what's going to make him a better man, I'm all for it. And uh, now I'm doing my thing. But, man, I was just – when I met you, you are exactly who I thought you were. You know, yeah. you're, still, you're still – you're still you. Yeah. You just are – you know, you just are embraced by a higher purpose. You know that there's a calling in your life, and that's where you're headed. And, man, I, I feel the same way. So, man, it was, that's how I felt, truthfully. And I had to take it one step back and then I jumped two feet forward. So. <laughs> and I, I think you, 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 man, you, um, Rojo, um, Flaco, um, these guys have actually helped a lot of people um, actually feel like they're not so weird if they come check out my sermons or check out my Bible study. So, man, I thank you for that because here's the thing, man, the Bible says that God will use anybody he chooses, that he will change the hearts of kings any which way he pleases. You know, and um, and I think, man, that whether you are a Christian or not, I, I know you believe in God. You you're wearing a cross. You oh, know what I mean, you're wearing a cross, so you have a reverence for God. And the fact that I just want you to know that even your channel, what you're doing, and and even talking positively of me, it allows people to be like, oh, it's cool. Then 
it's cool that I listen in. It's cool that, you know what I mean? And I'm getting uh, a lot of that myself, man. So, but unfortunately, a lot of Northerners didn't feel the same as you. You know, I did get hit with a lot of negativity, not so much in the prison, but when I got out, mm -hmm. you know, and, and for whatever reason, um, I don't know if I told you, I think I did, that they tried removing me in Sacramento. Yeah, you told me. <laughs> yeah. And um, I, like I said, man, I, I never, I was never anything more than a regular Northerner. Yeah. Uh, and, um, you know, I think a lot of people thought differently because of Operation Black Widow, because of whatever. I mean, was I a gang member? Yes. Was I, I was probably more of a drug dealer. I think I was a gang member more when I was in my teens, but as an adult man, I was probably more a dope dealer than anything else, you know. Um, but, you know, um, in Sacramento County, I was told I was spreading poison. Um, I was told, and again, there was, as far as I know, they were all Northerners in my pod and even in my floor because there's three pods there and they, you know, um, sign language to each other and whatnot uh, to have me removed. And um, I, I'm just a stubborn man. I refuse to be removed. And um, so that's why I ask you, you know what I mean? Like in your eyes, um, what was the situation, you know? Yeah, and like I said, uh, being a Norteño uh, and Soldado, we were privy to a lot more information yeah. than, than, you know, just the average Northerner would be. So it's a trickle-down effect. By the time the information gets down to them, man, it could be months, weeks, years, you know? Mm -hmm. It's not, it's, it's a need-to-know basis. You know, sometimes they need to know, sometimes they don't. And yeah. uh, when it came to your situation, Everyone knew that you were incarcerated and they figured out of sight, out of mind. Okay, he's going to go do his time. He's doing his Christian thing. It is what it is. He didn't tell on no one. So there's no reason behind any, any bad thing to befall him, you know? And I think that these guys just know the notoriety of, you know, you, you everyone knew who you were. Yeah. And them hearing rumors, oh, he's Christian. Now, this word of spreading poison is the poison, right? Um, this is a word that I helped to instill into these youngsters. A lot of people around me helped to instill. Uh, it was a propaganda word. It was a word used for propaganda. Oh, these guys are spreading poison. Oh, they're guys spreading poison. Basically uh, trying to steer you away from our cause, right? Which yeah. at the end, our cause was to utilize you. Um, so, hey, you didn't make them guys sit at that table and listen to you. If they chose to sit at that table and listen to you, you were just speaking the, the word. You know, yeah. you're speaking the true yeah. word, the one true word. If you weren't poisoning them, if, if not, you were giving them the truth, right? Mm -hmm. So for these, they if they're going to be mad at anyone, they got to be mad at these guys for sitting down. Obviously, you had been there before a lot of these guys got there doing your thing and yeah. hadn't went anywhere yet. So someone got there that just felt some type of way and felt that maybe it would be to move on you or to have you moved on would make them look better. But little did they know that at the same time that that move right there could have hindered their career because there was guys in high places that had already told you personally or had already told me or told people around that you were to be left alone. To do your yeah. own thing. Well, the interesting, I now never know who it was. Uh, and I don't mean to keep this thing going. I don't want to say this yeah. is that I remember when they tried removing me, I, I refused. And mm -hmm. I found out later that a, a kite was sent up to the eighth floor because in the eighth floor, somebody arrived there with some status. I don't know who it is to this day. I have no idea. I don't know if it was just NR. I don't know if it was, I don't know what it was. But this person wrote back. And the only reason I know this is because one of the northerners in the pod. Um, he was cool with me, man. And he was telling me, he goes, Hey man, David, man, maybe you should roll it up. Maybe I don't want you to get hurt. I'm like, I ain't leaving. I'm not leaving, you know? And, um, he told me that, uh, somebody arrived and they shot up a kite and that person, whoever it was basically said, you have no business putting hands on him. He's part of operation black widow. And they basically said, if they have issues with him, trust me, he would have been dealt with. You, you're going to get yourself in a wreck, is what they exactly. told them. And, and he's exactly right. Uh, being that you were part of that operation, and, and, and there was a lot of heavy hitters involved in that, um, to move on you or to do anything like that, the way they justify it is to do anything to you. First of all, it was unjustified, period, because you were solid. But to even do that, these youngsters took it upon themselves, or these northerners took it upon themselves to handle that. Um, that could have steered you the other way. You could have felt some animosity. They could have instilled animosity in you. You said, yeah. you know what? Because a lot of guys have done that. You know, I'm getting even. You know what I mean? I'm going to say everything <laughs> I know. No, and this is, this is, and so yeah. this is the way they're thinking. Everyone's always thinking of themselves. So they're saying, let this guy be, leave him alone. 
But at the same time, these guys that are really higher up there were the word they were giving us was he's solid. And, but yeah, but he went Christian. So what? Yeah. Who cares? You know what I mean? He can be Christian as long as he's not out there saying, standing up in the middle of the day room yelling, don't be this. And, you know, yeah. as long as he's not being like a little puppet, right? Yeah. Then you could be all right. But, and, and so that's, and that's what it was, man. That's what I was told yeah. myself, you know? So you, you had, I know in a phone conversation, you had mentioned um, uh, an uncle. And, and I think that was something that reaffirmed you that, that people can really change when they come to Christ. Um, can you, can you sort of share a little bit about your uncle a little bit? Yeah, I actually have an uncle. He's actually went to your church a couple of times. He's, he's from, uh, originally from Turlock and lives in, lives in Modesto now. Um, he used to be, man, an alcoholic, right? Yeah. I'm talking about, man, this guy would drink from the moment he woke up. He'd go buy a case of 40s, six in the morning. Wow. And would eat, would drink a whole 40, would slam the whole 40 before he even took one bite of his food for breakfast. Then he start on the next one. And this happened all day. I mean, he would just, I would listen to him scream at my grandmother's house. He lived with my grandmother all night, drunk, calling his baby's mothers and people that he didn't even know. And just, he was, it was an everyday thing. What happened one day was, uh, you know, I, I had to get out of there. I would go visit my grandmother and I just kept taking them orders. I got to get out of here. This guy's too much. And we tried, hey, calm down. Nothing was going to work. Nothing was going to help. He was what he was. He did that for several years. Wow. Uh, then one day I went and everything stopped. And he was just normal. He wasn't drinking. And I said, whoa, 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 what's going on here, right? And he, and he was getting ready for church. He went to uh, the house of rest over there in Modesto with the other pastor, the big, the bigger one. Oh, the house, you mean? The house. The house. The house. That's where he was going to the house. He said, you should go with me. So I went with him, tripped out on it. It was cool. Um, but he got heavily into going to church. And I said, what happened? He said, yeah, he was in the backyard. And he knew he had a problem. Yeah. So he was like, God, if you're real, show me I got a problem. Do something if you're real. And, and you don't test God, but he he did. He was at his wit's end where he was just like, I don't care. Show me. You got to show me and then make me believe. And he fell to his knees. And when he got up, he hasn't drank now for like 15 years. Wow. That, wow. And he, he's I mean, he's dedicated. He goes to church every. He's you know I, he's not perfect. I won't say he's perfect, but uh, he has nobody. Drink. Nobody is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. hasn't drank, he hasn't drank a drop in 15 years, man. So I seen it. So things like be like this and just different things I've seen show me that man. There is something out there. There's some something going on. Yeah. Um, so you're you're not an atheist. You know yeah. there's a God. Oh, I know there's a God. Oh yeah, I'm I'm, I'm a Catholic. Yeah, You know, I did my Holy Communion, my first confirmation. Uh, I used to go with my parents, you know, when I was younger. I went, yeah, yeah my whole family are Catholics. And I got Christians, too. Yeah. Um, and it is what it is. You know, I don't, it, get into all, I don't get into all the, yeah. the religious part of it of this is different, this is better, this is he says, she yeah. says. Um, it's all, yes, I believe in a higher power, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. And I noticed, like, you know, I, I notice, I can't help but notice, and I think I brought it up to you, is the very fact that, like, for instance, you, man, even before we met, in person, um, you're in my prayers, you know what I mean? Because I know how haters are. I know, I mean, the more you rec get recognized, trust me, I get recognized everywhere I go. I go to a restaurant, I go to Walmart, gas station. Um, I thank God to this point, it's always positive, you know, mm -hmm. but I mean, you never know, you never know, you know, so you were in my prayers, you know, you and um, uh, everybody, man, everybody I come across, man. And, and even when we were in Los Angeles together, you know what I mean? And it was just, you are somebody that that is important to me now, and um, and I I hold you in my prayers, man. I just want you to know that, you know, and, and not just for your safety, man, but just for everything, everything that you're doing, you know, for God to continue to re reveal Himself to you, like He has with your uncle, or yeah. And and I know and I noticed this, and I think I brought it up to you in Los Angeles, is the fact that I'm like, man, you have you are literally surrounded by Christians. Um, yeah. When I met your trainers, I'm like. Yeah. Gunner, I'm like, <laughs> you are surrounded by Christians, you know, and I think that that is a, whether that's on purpose or by accident, um, I think that's a good thing, man. It's, it's, it's funny that who God throws in your life, right? Uh, my trainer, I've known him for 35 plus years. We actually walked off that bus together in Fred C. Nellis as young kids, you know? Uh, yeah. So everything that I've went through, he's went through. And like I tell people, no one will ever understand you that hasn't been through it with you. You know, he's the one person in this world that I know from day one was with me. 
you know, and we're still 35 years later, like brothers, not like friends, like brothers. He was right there in my corner, you know, um, and I'll be in his on his his thing. He does his thing, too. Um, but he's heavily into being a Christian. His friend that came with him, the homie Joe, he was heavily, in, you know, this is yeah. this is the push, Land of Kings. Um, that's my charity. You know, that's what I wanted to give back because I like to give back to real righteous people that I know are going to do something with it. And you didn't even uh, know he was a Christian, right? I didn't even know. I mean, I, he got a hold of me through this YouTube stuff and, oh, orale, what's up? Mm. And we started talking and then he's like, hey, I, I'm running my own thing, this, this, and that. And after we got, to, I seen that it was a Christian base, but then also he's, you know, trying to help the youth, which is yeah. what I'm trying to do. So I said, man, we, maybe we could work something out here. And uh, and that was it. You know, that was it. And then it just happened to be where he he's into uh, martial arts and jujitsu and all that. So that was, he could help me with the, you know, the fight and yeah. just, I mean, there was just a lot of different things going on. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah. And then the other guys that I surround myself, it's just, I keep solid individuals around me regardless, yeah. regardless of what anyone else may think, you know, uh, these guys are just as solid as they come. And that's who I choose to keep around me because, um, you know, you're only good. You're only as good as your weakest link as the, you know, yeah. one well-oiled machine. We moved like one well-oiled machine. And yeah, it is a trip. I did think about it too when I got back and I sat down. I said, "Man, they're all Christians around me." It's like <laughs> God put you no. Know, it's like God putting the soldiers around me. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. because like you say, man, I am starting to become popular. I am starting to become noticed. You know, I just went with my family and got noticed uh, a few different places. I am, and 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 you, some people and most and just like you was positive, but in some cases, some people feel they like it the way it is. They don't want to see Rasa United. Yeah. They don't want to see hear the agenda I'm pushing. You know, it seems like every time someone is pushing for the positive for the people, they come up short. So yeah. I keep these guys around me, making you know this is who they, they protect me. You know, it's like protection. Not that I need. I mean, I can handle my business, but I always more a eight. eight eyes are better than two. Yeah, or four at least. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, man. So that that's the, that's one thing I noticed about that and. Um, man, I, I gotta say, man, I enjoyed, uh, just breaking bread with you. I enjoyed the fact that we were able to have dinner and, um, that was a, a real, I had a really, really good time. You know what I mean? Just kind of just talking and joking and laughing and, and breaking bread. Breaking bread has always, um, it causes, a, it's causes a bond. You know what I mean? That's why, you know, when you, when you just go and, 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 and just eat somewhere, I don't know. It's like eating brings our defenses down and we get yeah. to know each other, you know? We had and, a great time. Great it's, time. That steak, everybody, man. Everybody was, oh, that steak was all right. Huh? <laughs> that, 18, that 18 ounce. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to 18 Street for that one. <laughs> so hey, it was yeah. good. Yeah. yeah no, just, and then the, the company that we had, everybody was engaged in conversation. Yeah. But nothing was nothing was negative. Everybody, there was positive vibes. We all were smiling, happy, taking pictures. And 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 I and I remember talking to my homeboy Landy Kings after, and uh, you know his name. But I got, I talked to him after, you know, because we always have this different relationship than everyone else. Yeah. We're, we're brothers, right? Yeah. So I pulled him to the side. I said, you didn't think we'd be kicking it with Dino? Huh? That was six, <laughs> nah, I never thought that would happen, right? I said, there we go, right? He was like, you're doing it, Canalito. Keep pushing. <laughs> I said, slowly but surely, right? But, I mean, just because we both listen to your music together. We both, you know, back in the days. Yeah. We both were with that that movement. So now to sit back and be like, wow, we're on, we're grown men now. Yeah. We're all grown men and everybody there was like pushing positive. They, uh, you were, you know, you and your wife were asking them about what their movement, what they got going on. And the guy showed, Joe showed you his little mustard seed. Uh, yeah, that's cool. Uh, I remember you took a liking to it. You were like, wow, look at that. Mm -hmm. And uh, you guys were talking about your church and, and we had conversations going on over here, good conversations. And, you know, I was over there, Menudo, but, but it was good, but it was positive. Yeah. Because we were, we're pushing a righteous move, but it just was great, man. You don't get that feeling all the time. Yeah, your your trainer. What's his name? What's the brother's name? Landa Kings. Yeah, he. Um, I, I'm actually gonna do one of these videos with him pretty soon. Yeah. Actually, yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know if you knew about that or not. Yeah, he he talked to me. He talked to me. He was like, "Hey, I'm gonna do an interview." I said, "Man, do it. Do your thing, man. Whatever's yeah. gonna help uh, uh your uh, your cause, you know." Yeah, because I, I want to bring more because that's 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 the one thing, man, about about being Chicano and having a Christian church is we gotta our people, man, need a lot of help. And, and obviously, I'm going to always preach that God is the answer. God is everything. But here's the thing. There's there's our people that are coming out of prison, out of incarceration. They don't even know how to get a license. They don't know how to even have a, a resume. They don't know life skills. You know what I mean? So we're not just like some church in some uh, suburban neighborhood that, 
is, is saying, oh, just come to church every Sunday and praise God. We want to do that, but our people, man, they need a lot more. They need guidance. A lot of them have no dads. They didn't even know how to be a man. They don't, they don't even know how to change the oil in their car. You know what I mean? So I like what your trainer is doing because he's taking young people and 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 just showing them life skills. Life skills. Yeah, that's why I'm behind. That's why he was my charity. I didn't even hesitate when when they said they're talking about charity and charity. Yeah. Things. He, I automatically, he was the first one I thought about. And I, the reason being that I know exactly what he's doing. I know him as yeah. a person, a person as a person. So I know when he does something, he really does it. Yeah. And that was that. And, and, you know, and that's, and that's my model for the people, by the people is what I always say. Everyone knows Gunner for the people, by the people. Yeah. My, wife, my wife loves that motto. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm for the people. And I can consider myself one of those same people yeah. so for the people, by the people. Yeah. We got to do it for ourselves. No one else is going to do it for us. Yeah, especially, and I don't like to to divide people. I don't like to divide races. I don't like to divide. We're all the human race, um, but I will I will say that you know if the Latinos don't do it for themselves, um, we're just going to get stepped all over. It's, it's yeah. just history. History dictates what's been happening. So we got to have someone, man. And like I said, if I if I myself, you as well, um, Land the Kings, guys like that, got to champion this movement. That's this is yeah. what God's put on our shoulders. It's what we have to do. Yeah, you know, because I've I've often asked, um, I'm like, who's the Martin Luther King of today? Who's the Caesar Chavez of today? Who's? And it's it's just our people need guidance, man. People need guidance. I'm not talking about just Latinos. People, just people, people. you know. People and um, and and by doing these videos and doing what it is that we're doing, we are we are becoming that voice, you know. And I think that's key, and that's that's very important, man. Especially a time like yeah. this, so. Um, kind of the last thing I want to talk about that we have not mentioned at all is uh, we had a conversation about a movie. And I heard you on the video. You had mentioned, but you're like, I ain't going to say nothing until he says it. I'm mm -hmm. guessing you were talking about our conversation, correct? Or Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, guys, you're going to hear it for the first time right now. And um, I wrote a book back in... I think 99, I caught a year back then for uh, some having some meth and um, I did it on house arrest. And uh, they were they had this program, if you pay X amount of money a week, you could just get an ankle bracelet, house arrest. I'm like, of course, you know what I mean? I had the money, I, I was a recording artist. Why am I gonna sit in jail if I could sit at home? And uh, I ended up writing this book, Midst of My Confusion, back then. And I remember releasing it. I remember the, I had distribution for, for a record company for our music sam goody warehouse tower records and and i pushed it on them and they're like we're not a book store and i said what if i throw a cd in it <laughs> you know and um so the original book actually had a cd so that way we could promote it more as a cd that happened to come with a book rather than a book it's just weird stuff that re uh, record stores used to want but i wrote this book man in 1999 about about a, a young chicano that is being pulled between his his rasa he was taught about Cesar Chavez he was taught about this but then he's pulled by the gangs in uh, that begins in 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 his little small town the the book is based it's it's a fictional story but it's based in the valley the way I describe it is is here in the Central Valley and um, anyways I had this conversation with you mm -hmm. and um, is it all right to talk about what oh, I asked I, you? yeah go ahead yeah I asked Gunner I told him I said. There is a character that I think you would be able to do it to a T, you know? And what did you say? Who is it? <laughs> I said, let's do it. I got it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I think uh, it's going to be amazing. Um, it's something that is, is going to be in uh, within a year, actually. Um, these things don't, don't, they're not easy to do. You know what I mean? They're not easy to do. Um, a lot of you might be thinking, of the old darkroom movies and the quality of it. I mean, we were ahead of our time back then and, and we were working with limited stuff. Now everything is HD. Now it's different now, you know? And um, I, I showed you, remember I showed you the trailer of the last movie I did? Oh, it was great. It That looked 100% different than what I was used to. Hey, being heartless can get you killed, right? So then I seen that. From that to that, oh, that was a leaps and bounds difference. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I, the reason I showed you that because I didn't want you in your mind to think it was going to look like some of those old films. 
Um, and even then, right now, that movie I showed you, the trailer I did for Always With You, the movie I did, uh, I think in 2013, I released it in 14. Um, that was done in HD, but I just acquired uh, a 4K camera. Mm. So it's going to be even better. I got better lighting. I got better equipment, better everything. You know what I mean? So this is, this is going to be the Mi Vida Loca, Blood In, Blood Out. I mean, it's been a while, you know what I mean, since... Um, since we've had a movie that that has kind of been out of that same genre, you know, yeah. and uh, I'm really excited, man, because I I know you're gonna be able to pull it off just by seeing you seeing you on, on your videos. I'm just like I know this dude can hit this perfectly. Absolutely. You know, so I just wanted to share that, and and uh, uh, I know you've been really busy, so I'm not sure if you've been able to read through it or not, but um, it's it's I it's I've been, I had all the stuff going on. I started yeah. it and then I got all this going on. The last time I talked to you, you said, Have you, did you pick it up? I said, I picked it up. I started to read it. It's a great book. And then I got sidetracked, but I'm going to get right back to it. Yeah. And I have to, I'm going to have to read it a hundred times. So that way I, <laughs> well, be, I become this character. I can't just, yeah. you know, read it, but I got to become him. But yeah. oh, I know I could do it. That's not a problem. And can I give it some authenticity? Absolutely, because I've lived the life that this guy supposedly lived. You know, yeah, yeah, it's, it's 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 crazy because um, even there's even a scene, man. There's even a scene that kind of reminds me of your spill you did on how you ended up in YA in mm -hmm. the first place, and yeah. um, it's it's very very similar. And I'm just like, that's crazy, you know, yeah. and um the more I thought about it. So I'm right now in the minute stages of making it into a script because obviously you can't take a 200 page book and throw it into 90 minutes for a 90 minute feature film. Yeah. So it, it's, it's about using artistic license to shape it into a script, you know? Um, but yeah, man, I'm really excited that, that you're on board. I'm going to have Jose Rosette on it. Also, he was in a lot of the dark room movies back in the day. Um, he's going to play uh, a character for sure. If anybody's out there, if you're an actor or an actress, I'm still looking to fill a lot of the slots. Um, even if you're beginning or you're taking acting classes or something like that, um, I'm not looking for just anybody who wants to be in a movie because that's going to be anybody. This has got to be, it's going to be done very professionally and, and I need to find actors and actresses that not only fit the character, but can actually play it off, you know? Yeah. So um, anyways, man, um, Anything else that we didn't touch upon that you want to share? Um, that's pretty much it, man. Got a lot of a lot of stuff up and coming. I wanted to ask you too. Uh, we got well. I'll ask you off camera. We got a lot of things up and coming, and I'll ask you personally. That yeah. way, we don't just put it out there to people. We'll announce it later on. I'll let you announce it some other time. But yeah, we'll definitely talk. I got a lot of things going on. Yeah, that's awesome. So I think after this video, what I'm gonna do is is just so people get excited about the kind of quality we do. I have a a little commercial I did for the book, Mr. My Confusion. And then I have that trailer that I showed you of the last movie that I did, because I, I don't want people to think back to the movies I did 20, 25 years ago. I want yeah. them to see the kind of quality we're bringing today. Um, why is that important? Because I think that the arts is important, whether it's YouTube, whether it's books, whether it's movies, um, preaching at a service, um, the art you see that I do behind me, um, are, you know, there's so many ways we can uh, direct young people or even adults, man, to, to do things that are creative. And, um, and, and, and by doing that, but everybody doing their part, it, it helps bring hope to so many others. Yeah, absolutely. Creativity, man, is, 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 a, is a road, man. It's a road that's not traveled a lot, but man, when you go down it, man, it leads to wonderful things. You know, you always feel better about yourself when you create, even when you do a drawing, you want everyone to see it. Hey, you see what I drew? You yeah. know what I, mean? I don't look good, but I did it though. Right. And to you, it's the best thing, but mm -hmm. you know, but still to create that opens your mind, you know, and that's yeah. what we need. We need more people with being open-minded. Yes. Um, well, real quick, one last question, kind of off the wall. Everybody has a hustle in prison, whether it was ironing clothes for people, whether it was drawing, whether it was giving people haircuts, Mm -hmm. I know that's something I don't think you ever mentioned. What was your hustle, man? How'd you make uh, your your How'd you make your money to get some spreads? Right here, tattoos. Oh, oh you did tattoos. Tattoos was my thing. Um, to me, 
I can't draw that good. It's funny, right? I did when I was little. I actually drew, I remember if you remember those old commercials, you probably remember them. Uh, remember those old commercials? It was like a turtle and it would show like a pirate and it was like, yeah. oh, drawing. remember that one? Yeah. I actually drew something. My aunt got me the, the, the pamphlet for that. I drew something when I was little. It was so good. They wanted to uh, give me a scholarship into that school. Yeah. Because that school was expensive. That yeah. stuff you watch on TV, don't believe it, right? It was, it was expensive. And uh, so I drew good as a kid. You know, my daughters now draw real good. It's, it's weird. But as I got older, I strayed away from that. So I stopped drawing. Um, so I can't draw a stick figure. That's just not my thing anymore. But I could tattoo, hmm. which is weird, right? That yeah. I, someone could say, hey, go give me a sleeve, give me an arm sleeve and just go off the dome. And I could just do a clean sleeve on them. Yeah. But I sit there with paper, uh, pen and paper, my mind goes blank. It's weird. But once I get the, the skin, you know, the needle to the skin, it's on. I don't know, Ooh. just something that I picked up on. Uh, having cellies, they're wanting tattoos. You know, everybody wants tattoos in prison. We're bored. There's yeah. nothing else to do. Started doing them. Hey, I got better and better and better and better. And I practiced on my legs. And next thing you know, man, I won't say I'm the best in the world, but I, I'm pretty good. And I'm pretty good. I did this whole arm, pretty much all of it. So oh, you, you did your own arm. Yeah, I did my own arm. Did yeah. my own arm. So you were you so, were you were your your canvas. You were your own canvas. I, and that's the only way to do it. You have to make sacrifices and do, uh, you know. I know personally, I'm not going to let someone get tattoo on me that I, I can't see something they did you know yeah i need to believe it and so you had to be your, your own living billboard yeah absolutely i mean because you can only be mad at your stuff if you're walking away with the cross-sided uh northerner tattooed on you <laughs> <laughs> so uh i have one of those but anyways so yeah. yeah i mean hey i practice practice doesn't make perfect but it makes permanent that's another one of my sayings yeah uh, you could practice something doesn't mean you're going to be the best at it but you'll still know how to do it you won't forget how to do it it's not might not be the best, but it doesn't matter as long as you do it. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I do. I tattoo, and that was my hustle. You yeah. know. And everyone had one, but I, I everybody watching, had one, right? I wasn't watching no socks. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> you had to get them. We, you know, yeah. I used to draw. That's how I learned. I couldn't draw for nothing until I went to jail, and then I learned how to draw. And then I got to prison, and they had access to canvases and brushes, and um, that was my hustle, man. That's how I got my tunas and my sopas and my. Yeah. Uh, you know, I didn't want that that O'Keefe cheap coffee. I wanted the Folgers, you know, so. Oh, yeah, the O'Keefe, the, the bags of O'Keefe. Mm -mm. No yeah. way you need that jar of Folgers. Yeah. <laughs> or, or if you could somehow wiggle some Taster's Choice in there. Yeah. That would be true, too. That'd be cool. That would work. It, it was funny because normally, I, I know we're wrapping this up, but in, in the feds, they had the cheap non-brand, or I don't forgot what it was, uh, the powdered creamer, and then they yeah. had the vanilla you know what I mean? And so yeah. everybody used that regular one, but when we had to have a special spread, everybody busted out that French vanilla creamer because it costs oh, yeah. more. Yeah, you know, that everything special that you get that you can't get all the time yeah. becomes extra special, you know? Yeah. That's why this guy was like, hey, show us the spread. Where's the Doritos? And I said, oh, you're, you're tripping. You don't <laughs> eat the Doritos in a spread. You eat the Cactus Annie. The Doritos are for late night when you're watching a good movie. <laughs> you want to taste, taste every Dorito. You don't want to use yeah. it. It's so wasting it. Yeah, I remember getting the the um, the freeze dried refried beans, man, and oh, wow. um, man, and you, you get those, eat that with Doritos, oh, you know, just as a dip. Those are oh. hey, I'm I still look for those right now. I order them online. That's the only place to get them. I actually ordered yeah. a package through Walking Horse to just get those beans, and I ordered like ten bags because I don't care what anyone says, man. Those those beans are pretty good, huh? Yeah, yeah, and to this day, I don't, I can't drink my coffee unless it's a Cadillac. Obviously, I don't know because you know a lot of places don't give sugar. Sacramento County didn't give any sugar, man. So people were getting coffee and dropping Snicker bars in them. Yeah, you know that yeah. way, you, that way you get the caramel, you get the chocolate, you get everything in there, and they were just yeah. they're Cadillacs, man. So I mean, I don't use Snicker bars now. I throw some cocoa in there, but my wife knows I won't drink coffee unless it has cocoa in it. Yeah, that's Cadillac. That's a yeah. real one right there. So, yeah, man, uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop the video. I just want to thank you, man. I appreciate you. Appreciate everything you're doing. You're in our prayers, man, that, that, every, that God continues to surround you, you know, that God continues to watch over you, that his angels watch over you, man, and just protect you and, and, um, and give you good discernment and wisdom, you know, to make the choices. Because sometimes when you make these videos, man, we, 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 we could say things and later on we want to retract it. You know what I mean? So I just pray that God give you wisdom and, and in your words and, and that it all your, everything that you do brings around, brings unity and brings people closer together, man. Absolutely, man. I appreciate you. And then I'm just going to uh, keep fighting the good fight. 
continue to do what I do. And, and I know at the end, man, something positive is going to come out of this. Yep. Whether I, Even if I have to make certain sacrifices I don't want to make, man, uh, with myself, I'm willing to do that for the people. For the people, by the people. I got to live by my model. Yeah. So how do but people I, find you? Last thing. Um, Gunners Collective on YouTube. Uh, Gunners Collective on Instagram. Those are my two platforms. You can find me. Um, sky's the limit, man. You never know what you're going to see that day. I talk about a variety of things. Uh, it's all Rasa based. And at the end of the day, man, hopefully you can get something from it, whether it's a smile, it's a laugh. You got that coming anyways. Um, hopefully I can instill some type of positivity because that's where that's the end goal in this. No yeah. matter what I say and how I do it, my delivery, as crazy it is, it, as it is, really open your ears and listen because there's yeah. a message in between all that. I agree. I agree. So I'm going to end this bit, this recording and um, you guys see this little minute preview toward my book, The Miss of My Confusion, that we're about to make into a film, full feature film, and also the trailer of the last movie I did called Always With You, that we're making that into actually a novel and um, we're looking into getting that on Amazon Prime. So, all right, guys, thank you so much and check out these uh, little trailers. This Vida is so crazy. I guess I could try to justify all my actions to you, but instead I'll let you be the judge of it all. Sometimes there is no right or wrong in esta vida. It all depends on the situation. Let me start from the beginning of my story, even though it's a beginning much like every Chicano I've known. Please be patient with me. I'm not a storyteller. I'm just a crazy vato doing what I can to survive. Let me introduce myself. I was born with the name Joaquin, but the homeboys call me Loco. I gotta go. I'll call you tomorrow. You'll call me tomorrow? Yes, okay. Oh, yeah.